Yo, what's good people? Today I'm going to be talking about Raven and my thoughts, final feelings and thoughts on Tekken 8 Raven. You know, we had the CBT weekend, which was really lit. It was really fun to kind of just dive into Raven's changes because he is just completely not Master Raven. And I think that's kind of something that people struggle to understand is that this Raven doesn't play anything like Master Raven. Before we get into the video, like, comment, subscribe, most importantly put the notification on, click the bell because I, I don't think a lot of you are actually notified when I upload a video so that sucks but yeah do me a favour, click the bell, subscribe, all of that stuff, support because it's free. Let's jump into the video. Okay so I don't want to make it too long but I want to talk about Raven's changes and just on a surface level. So my immediate thoughts are Raven is much stronger in neutral because they he still retains the tracking so i th i think a lot of people thought that raven was going to be much easier to step due to an increase in movement an increase in lateral movement and the effectiveness of lateral movement but um he still retains like the fully tracking poke like for example down back two will track stepping left and down forward one actually tracks both sides now it's basically a fully tracking homing down forward one so you can't step it left and you can't step it right so that's a big big plus for raven one thing i will say is i feel like raven in this game forces you to respect his neutral a lot more so he has safe safer pokes like forward two three is now safe it does less damage and it doesn't have a counter hit knockdown but i would take it being safe over those properties but that's really good for raven plays in neutral and um one thing that they struggled with was getting people to respect you in neutral it's one thing that a lot of people ask me how in second seven how to get players to respect you in neutral and i think that comes from kind of conditioning as well raven has a lot of string pokes if that makes sense so he has forward two three he has three three he has three three four he has down back two one so a lot of those four neutral tools come from strings and i think the fact that they gave raven even more strings and even more mind games so for example down back two one one you got three three four which is also counted launcher now which is crazy that string was already annoying to deal with but now it's counted launcher that's going to make them want to respect 3-3 a lot more so yeah i feel like raven in neutral is a lot more not particularly scary but you do have to respect him a little bit more neutral and obviously he does retain the tracking properties of a lot of his new so he's still annoying to deal with or even more annoying to deal with now in tekken 8 than tekken 7. so let's talk about his stance his new stance okay so this is called soul zone which completely replaces haze he has some moves out of haze for example haze 3 is a low and it goes into back turn and on block it's minus nine so he still retains that move from haze it's just now from full crouch so they gave that move and literally put it as an input in full crouch but that is another great addition to raven's full crouch or crouch dash game but let's talk about soul zone so soul zone i think you can use it in many different ways and, and the problem with haze is that it didn't really have any options that you could use in neutral that were effective it haze just felt like a gimmick to me so you would do like one two haze and then you would kind of commit to an option i particularly used it for i would do like i don't know qsf one haze or one two haze and then i would wait for a button and react and press four which is like the teleport kick so that you could use it for that in terms of like reacting to buttons and punishing people for pressing you could re it was good for that but i feel like haze as a stance itself was pretty gimmicky and the transitions frame wise were quite slow so they increased the transition speed of soul zone so if you do like qcf1 soul zone i believe it's more uh it's more safe if you do one two soul zone it's more safe and it's more plus on hit i believe so that already gives it more utility from haze but i feel like you can actually just do raw soul zone and now it's a mix so there's a lot of mix-ups involved in soul zone one thing with haze is that you could kind of low-key react to like haze 3 even though the mid was kind of it was similar frame start up to haze 3 but i think haze 3 has such a distinct animation that you could react to haze 3 but now it's in full crouch it makes it a little bit more difficult to react to he has a low out of it which is a counter hit launcher you literally just saw it on the on the gameplay behind so it's a counter hit launcher it tracks both sides the only issue is it is launch on block but actually i don't think being launched on block is that much of an issue i feel like the issue with this move is the plus frame advantage you get on hit it's plus two on hit and personally for me i feel like if a move is going to be launched on block at least make it like plus four or something because a lot of the times you can't just step any follow-up option so like if you do souls on four while standing two you can just step 
like it beats mashing and stuff but yeah you can just step it so it's it would be nice for that move to be more plus you have soul zone 2 which is really sick i think i think it's one of the best soul zone moves because it's a heat engager it's safe and also it is a hit confirmable launcher in heat so what you do is you do souls on two and then if you see it hit you just hold forward if you see it get blocked you don't need to commit so that's one thing that is really nice about souls on two souls on three i think souls on three is the best move out of souls on personally because it goes really far i think it hits from about range 2.8 maybe so it's quite a long range poke it tracks the opposite side to down back two which is crazy so like he has now souls on three and down back two as mid pokes that track opposite sides and they're both going to back turn it also has an extension so players won't really press i feel like in tekken 8 when people start loving the matchup they understand raven's options out of certain things and i feel like i always thought that the more you know about raven the more mind games you can abuse because if you know an option out of down back two you, you're more likely to respect what's going to come after so it's the same situation so if you, the more you know about souls on three the less likely you are to disrespect it unless it's just a completely hard read and that's what i feel about raven in terms of knowing the matchup opens up opportunities for you to abuse the matchup knowledge if that makes sense because usually you would abuse lack of matchup knowledge but raven's very strange in the in the case that you can abuse the opponent knowing more so that's really nice about raven i really like that so that's souls on three goes to back turn i think it's minus four on block so same frames as down back two minus four on block low crushes so it's a, it's an excellent move really really excellent move he has haze one plus two kind of they kind of switched it up a little bit so it's it's a high now and it's zero on block so that's a good move to throw out there it looks plus on block but it's actually not so you can kind of abuse that a little bit i don't think people will press after it back turn i don't want to make it too too long because it's <laughs> nearing 10 minutes but back turn is strengthened overall i do feel like back turn down four being nerfed to minus 15 really affects raven that's like the one change that does affect raven i mean the taking away of undertaker from back turn doesn't really affect him that much it was kind of uh it was kind of brain dead anyway i don't really but to be fair people don't know this that are new but raven always had a back turn throw mix because in older tekkens generic throws were not you couldn't break them with one or two it was either like if i did the one generic throw you had to press one to break it and similar with generic throw with uh two plus four you had to press two so he actually had a mix up from back turn throws so he always had that but i want to talk about just his frames in back turn are just way better like back turn back two four is now plus two on hit stuff like that so it does more damage as well so they definitely did buff his pokes from back turn they gave him a back turn g clev stuff like that so i, I think generally back turn is stronger it's just he does need a low that is useful because it's still useful but it's really risky now it's yeah so i feel like back turn down four being nerfed is quite a big hit to be fair um but i feel like overall back turn is buffed in a nutshell because his frames are better he's, he's given more options back turn four two three is now safe again with a plus 14 guaranteed down forward one four on hit so that's nice his punishment is overall buffed as well so they buffed the frames on while standing four which is plus seven now on hit they gave him a down forward one four which is an i14 punish very very good i14 punish so yeah raven is just completely doesn't play like master raven but i feel like he is stronger than current master raven i would say in terms of strength i feel like he's in between current master raven and release season four master raven because release season four master raven was sick, like such a sick character very underrated but i feel like she was very very strong still strong now but definitely not as strong as tekken 8 raven in terms of tekken 8 raven strength right now as it stands i feel like he is in between that kind of season four master raven and it's still season four but we kind of call it season five now so season see in between season four and season five i want to talk about one more move that's his backswing so it's minus 15 on block but it has very interesting properties where you can be at a situation where you're minus four and if they jab it's invincible so he has invincibility frames um on startup and that i think is really nice for evading situations and stuff like that okay that wasn't the last thing i want to talk about the last thing i want to talk about is his teleport which is called white hole so he can do teleport from a lot of things so like he can do haze uh not haze <laughs> soul zone teleport so he can do but the thing with this is he can do white hole into full crouch which is crazy white hole into back turn or regular white hole which he's in neutral and i think that opens up a lot of opportunity for just 
unseeable mix-ups because if you okay like for example if you block a qcf1 and he does soul zone and he does white hole you do not visually have enough time to react to whether he's gone into full crouch or into back turn or in neutral for then you to react and then press a button it's too quick and i'm going to show you an example of where it really really is effective so those are my thoughts on tekken 8 raven for the three days i had with the character over the cbt weekend i think he's really fun more than anything he's just really fun i mean strength will come after it you know the game's not out yet so you know we can kind of judge more based on changes they make when the full game comes out but i think right now he's very strong and he's insanely fun and i think that's the most important thing for a character to to be fun um when you play them he's just mad fun so yeah as i said like comment subscribe please click the bell please click the bell because youtube i don't know i'm shadow band or what i don't know <laughs> but yeah those are my thoughts